Doc Talk is brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Pyramid 5 plus Prespons SQ, a market leader in combination respiratory vaccines. Hi there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm glad that you joined us today. It's going to be a great show. Our guest is the section leader for veterinary toxicology from Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, Dr. Steve Inslee. And we're going to talk about ergot toxicity and things that can be associated with that, whether it's cattle or horses. Stay tuned and enjoy the show. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Prespons SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Prespons SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me here. I, I, uh, one of the things that we'd like to talk about is ergot, ergot toxicity. This year has been particularly problematic in the Midwest in general uh, with ergot. It's a, it's a fungus that will grow on grass, grasses and uh, produces a chemical similar to what fescue does. So uh, this year, not only have we had some of the issues with fescue grass that we normally see, but when this fungus a second fungus grows on the on the seeds and uh, produces the same similar toxin then those effects become additive so not only you know do we have issues with fescue that we normally do but uh, we'll also you know double the dose basically with some of these ergot uh, infestations that we've seen because of the cool wet spring we in in the midwest last year we had we had a lot of rain it looks like the drought was over rained rain till the end of may it quit at the end of may and then we didn't see you know, the rain was very spotty then from, from then on, but that cool, wet, early part of the year was ideal for this claviceps purpura fungus that grows on there. And so it, it, it infected a lot of the grasses that we make haze out of, uh, besides the grasses that we graze. And so a lot of the, a lot of the animals that may be on fescue during the summertime uh, get, to, get to eat hay in the, in the fall and winter then that, that's not infected. Uh, this year didn't you know we didn't get that opportunity because we had this ergot that infected the grass and and we're still seeing issues right now with that so when when uh you know what what types of grasses are we most well, commonly seeing it in well normally we can see it in any you know any of the grasses uh, we, we've seen it anywhere from timothy hay to brome hay you know any of the grasses or anything with a seed head is going to be susceptible to this fungus when the conditions are when the envir environmental conditions are right and so those grasses that don't produce the, the endophyte like fescue does, uh, you know, will not be as bad as fescue, but uh, we have a lot of fescue in our pastures, a lot of fescue in our hay, our hay meadows. And so when we have the fescue uh, alkaloid, the ergovaline, in addition to these ergot alkaloids from ergot, it's, it's been a significant issue. Well, so, so wet spring followed by a drought is kind of the perfect perfect storm for the ergot. That's exactly what it likes. And, and this year, we, we normally have ergot. Uh, we see ergot in our grasses, but not to the extent that we've seen this year. The, the, you know, the, the numbers of ergot in, infestations are you know, very high. Uh, you know, and we've, we've done some survey work uh, probing bales to see what concentrations these ergots have been, and they're, they're, they've been uh, you know, extremely high. And what are some of the limits then when we're when we're talking about ergot uh, infestation? We uh, some of the same things that we we talk about when cattle are grazing fescue. The 
the heat intolerance in the summertime, uh, they get fat necrosis or have the potential to do that. Also, it's vasoconstrictive, so it can affect the ends of the ears, uh, tail tips, and hooves. And uh, it, those are summertime problems. In the wintertime, what we see then is that vasoconstriction again, causing lameness, intermittent lameness issues that are related to the blood supply to the hoof. So we can have anywhere from you know, intermittent lameness all the way to hoof necrosis where the animal actually loses the hoof. And we, we've seen some of that this year uh, in cattle. And uh, you know, horses are particularly sensitive. They, uh, they, they, they're even more sensitive than cattle. So. Well, let's take a break and let's come back and let's touch more on the, the equine side of things. Okay. You're watching Doc Talk and we're glad that you joined us. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. You know, I think people are just kind of born with a passion. I wouldn't be where I am today without that horse. Oh, I'm not passionate about horses. That's just something that's in here. I, I can't explain it. Some people go to a job every day. I just go do what I love to do. That's all I know is horse. The bottom line, we're for the horse. It's whatever we can do to make life better for the horse, wherever they are whatever they do. They're just magic, that's all. They just, they just, they got me. If we always do what's right for the horse, we will never go wrong. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Steve Ensley. And Steve, you're the section leader of Toxicology at Iowa State's College of Veterinary Medicine, which, um, you know, you guys see a lot of cases and uh, have a tremendous history for veterinary diagnostics and veterinary toxicology and glad to have you on the show and ergot is one of those that whether it's fescue or whatever we have just it's 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 been around since moby dick was a minute right i mean we a lot of the actually a lot of the the, the french revolution was blamed on ergot ingestion the um, you know a lot of historical events even the witch witchcraft trials in in uh, salem we were blamed on ergot ingestion People get hallucinogenic when you consume those. Uh, so ergot, is, yeah, as long as there's been grains and people been, have been consuming those, there's been issues with ergot. Now we don't want people going out and eating fescue. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, a lot of the, a lot of the ergot, we have wheat, the small grains, you know, the rye, the barley, the wheats get ergotized and, and mm. uh, you know, and historically they, were, they made bread out of those, had the chemical in there and then people ingest it and, you know, uh, see, they actually see the same things in animals that, you know, that we do see in humans. The heat just, intolerance was the one that, that uh, was the classic sign for me when I would have cattle come into feed yards uh, or come in off a of pasture and, and it'd be 80 degrees and all the other cattle are doing fine and here's a pen that is open mouth breathing and, and can't, can't stomach it. Exactly. We, you know, ergot or the fescue, the endophyte infected fescue grass has gradually, you know, mo moved across the U.S. We didn't have, 10 years ago, we didn't have problems in Iowa with it. Now it's a common, common grass in our fields. And so, and it's moving north all the time. It's a very hardy, you know, well adapted grass does fine. 
except the animals, you know, when the endophyte is high in a high enough concentration, the animals just cannot tolerate, you know, the, the, the dose they get when they have to ingest that every day. And horses particularly are, are a species that's very sensitive, even more sensitive than cattle, probably the most sensitive to the ergats that we see in their grasses and haze. And one of the problems that we see this time of year is prolonged gestation. And the, the, if a mare is on, a pregnant mare is on the ergotized grasses or fescue grass even, uh, they'll, they, they won't foal, they'll maintain the foal and, and their foaling date, you know, they'll exceed their foaling date by weeks sometimes. Mm. And then when they do foal, they've got an oversized fetus, the placenta is a demitus, and they also become very agalactic with that. So if they do manage to have a, a foal alive, you know, the agalactia issue can be as serious as the you know, anything else that we see. So when we talk about, you know, earlier in the gestation period, it can cause some abortion issues. It's potential for abortion issues, especially because it's heat related. You know, animals are being bred when it's hot and they can't, you know, they can't maintain normal temperatures. So we, we do feel like we see abortion issues and had this last year, you know, because of the ergotized greens. So take home message is, is if you're gonna, you know, during drought situation, make sure you get your hay tested. Right. This year particularly, it's been an issue. You need to know the status and especially, you know, your grasses that you graze, you know, we need to be able to get animals off of those, you know, periodically if we can to be able to manage those. And, and so testing is one of, the, one of the strategies that we've used. Good. When we come back from the break, folks, we're going to continue on with Dr. Steve Inslee. He's a world of knowledge for us on veterinary toxicology. Uh, tickled to have him here and we'll see you here in just a minute. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. Robert Gentry has 31 years of experience in mixed practice, focusing a majority of his time on beef cattle. As a founding director of the Academy of Rural Veterinarians, Dr. Gentry recognizes the need to encourage interest in life as a rural practitioner and advocate for rural veterinarians. He served as Vice President of ARV in 2011 and 2012. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Steve Inslee. And, and Steve, during the break, we're talking a little bit about, you know, cows and gestation and calving and, and things like that. We talked about the horses and, and, and prolonging gestation. What are, what are some of your recommendations on, on 
cows. What we what we've seen this year is we because of the the high. Uh, ergot alkaloid in our grasses that cattle were grazing, we saw some abortions we felt like were related to the cows ingesting the ergot, inability to regulate their body temperatures. And so on, uh, on hot days, you know, they don't want to, uh, they, you know, don't want to move. They're, you know, they're, they're trying to look for shade. So they don't, you know, they don't want to breed if you, if you, and the bulls affect it as well. The bulls, right. you know, suffer from the same things the cows will. But, uh, so we did see some cases where we had, you know, high, uh, high, open numbers when the cows are pregnancy tested this fall, and we feel like those are related to some of the ergot issues that we've seen. And then when you have them on the hay and they're gestating, there's points in times where you, they can tolerate it, but then you have to get them off? Right, I mean, they, um, you know, they can, they can, normally we like to have them off. If, they, if they've got a grazed fescue in the summertime, get them on hay in the fall and the winter that doesn't have any ergot or, or fescue in there. But it, when we, if we don't have any alternative and we have to feed it, we've been feeding that you know, to late gestation cows, but uh, trying to make sure we get them off of that at least a month before calving, and, and hopefully that'll be enough time. This this ergot, there these ergot peptides are very tightly bound on the on the on the vessel uh, surfaces and make them constrict. And so, the, the the bad thing about exposure is it can take a long time to wash out. You know, to get rid of the the compound totally. So. Uh, you know they can they can tolerate it for a while, but late you know if it's calving season right now, we want to get them off because we don't you know we're worried about the agalacti and, and other issues associated. And with we that. have an an agalactia for, for non veterinarians. For the, oh uh, no milk, <laughs> so they have no milk. Yeah, sorry about that. I That's mean right. normally we'll see you know cows that look the udder looks fine. You know they're the calves are born, but there's no milk or very little milk, and they don't get. And that affects the amount of colostrum also that they're able to produce. So big time, big time, big time problem this year. You know has been particularly problematic for us. A grossriosis from a galactia to the right. from the cow to the calf. Right. And and when we see them come in the feedlot, and we see those wean calves come in the feed yard. You know, it does take a, a while. It seems as though they get over faster on a grain diet. Right. The washout period is shorter if we put those animals on, switch them over to the two ration or three ration, right. um, but uh, still going to take quite a while. Yeah, it's a, it's a. We've looked at a lot of intervention strategies when we get animals in, you know, to get them, get them off of there. What do we do to? For horses, we do have a compound domperidine that you can treat a mare with that will help, will alleviate the the, the negative negative effects of these ergots, but it's not cost effective in cattle. You know, it's just. Uh, so we're we are limited about what strategies we can do to try to limit the impact. Well, and, and uh, we also have to keep withdrawal times and Correct. and you know consumption things in mind that we don't have to with the companion animal. Right. That that that's a big issue. You know, f f a safe food supply is, is one of the things that we're all very interested in, and ergat can v complicate that a lot. You bet. Well, we're going to take a break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to wrap up our discussion today with Dr. Steve Ensley from Iowa State University talking about ergot toxicity. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center, and today for a horse tip, we're going to talk about fly spray. Fly spray can be all kinds of realms of different things, oil based, water based, what's the best thing? You know, if there would be the super save all and protect all, everybody would be using it. But it is variable and it's because fly spray actually gets degraded by sunlight. So that's why it doesn't last that long on the horse or we think that flies are resistant to it. So reapplication is going to be important. Be careful with the oil-based products because it can cause a dermatitis or irritation of the skin if it gets too thick. There's also different things you can put ap apply over the mane and tail, kind of spot applications. Those can be also very beneficial, not just for flies, but also for ticks and other external parasites that might be bothering your horse. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. 
Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with the section leader for veterinary toxicology, Dr. Steve Inslee, and he is uh, on staff at Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and we're talking about ergot toxicity or and that. And so one of the things we decided we probably better talk to him about testing, and and you do that every day in your lab. Exactly. That's uh, that's kind of our. Our key, or that that's our part of the diagnostic process, is how you know how we, you know, how do we quantitate what the exposure is and then try to determine risk. So, there you can, uh, you know, we can test the forages or grasses for uh, these different ergopeptides. So what we look for in pasture grass, if you want to collect seed heads or or grass in general, take some swaths, uh, you know, about a pound. We'd like to get about a pound of the material, uh, and then we we we'll, we process that try to make it homogeneous, then we analyze that for these different alkaloids that are in there. But, uh, so grass samples we, you can collect because we do some of that to see how much fescue is there and how much of this alkaloid is in there because the fescue grass actually, it's a defense mechanism. So when it's drought stressed and it's, it's uh, not getting the water it needs, the alkaloid concentration will go up in the, in the grass seed as well, or in the grass itself. And when it goes to seed is when it's particularly problematic. So you want to prevent if you've got fescue grass and you're grazing that in the summertime, prevent it from going to seed because the concentration is 10 times higher in the seed than it is in the rest of the And plant. that's the reason why you'll see some people out there on their paddocks mowing it right. before, right. before seed if before it heads it out or seed. before it heads out. And then once you make uh, hay, you know, in this year in particular, what we like to do is we like to sample the bales, but we want to make sure if you're going to probe the bale, the sample, that you go in from the side of the bale, not the cut face. Not the core, the end. Not the end of the core, uh, because we want to get a, a cross section of the seed heads and as much grass as we can, you know, through the, through the whole, you know, through that whole bale. And when we, when we go through the side and make a, make a probe there, we just get one section of the grass, not a, not a good distribution. So one so of the keys is- Do you go the all the way across it. that? We try, it depends on the size of the probe. You know, we'll collect as many probe samples as we can, mix that sample, you know, maybe, uh, I you know, have people try to carry a five-gallon bucket, probe as many bales as they can, put, it in, put that into a five-gallon bucket, mix that up, and then send about a pound of that to me to analyze. We get a good representative sample and can you know, feel like we can give you, you know, good, good information on your risk associated how, with those bales. How many bales should they? Well, or just get that five-gallon bucket full? Yeah, if you get that five-gallon bucket full, sample as many as you can. You know, the more hay you have, the more samples we get, the more random distribution, you know, the... The, the biostatisticians love that, you know, more samples <laughs> is better. And we love that too. So, you know, take as many as you can, take two five gallon buckets if you want to, mix those up, grab a subsample out of that, and that's what we like to test. Okay. And then on the uh, grass samples in the pasture, is there any place in the field that you shouldn't test? Or well, now I remember we used to throw a Frisbee, right. and then wherever it landed right. was kind of the random. Ex Place. Exactly. Well, what I usually tell, tell people to try to do is draw a diagonal line somewhere across the pasture and walk across that line and then every 10 steps take a sample and collect it and because, you know, what, we, what we're trying to do is get as random of a sample as we can from there. So Frisbee method, five gallon bucket <laughs> method, I think any of those are all acceptable. Well, thanks a million for being on the show today. It's always good information and fun to have you here. You bet, yeah, anytime. I, I, I love, to, love to talk about veterinary toxicology, so. Well, we're gonna have you back. All right, sounds good. <laughs> and thank you for watching today's show. <coughs> Remember, always work with your local veterinarian, and if you wanna find out more about what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. 
I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. Thanks for watching the show and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, a market leader in combination respiratory vaccines.